my dear friends, it happened to a very distressed youth who was totally disturbed because in a small little church there was a little problem and this disturbed, distressed youth brought a broken crucifix to the parish priest and said, somebody desecrated this cross and see father, this cross does not have the hands of Jesus nor the feet of Jesus and so what shall I do? Shall I bury it in the ground or shall I burn it up? And the parish priest said, well, keep it on the wall. It's a crucifix, keep it on the wall. And I'm sure when you look at this cross, you will remember now Jesus has no hands, no feet. And therefore, it is for you now to be Jesus' hands, for you now to be Jesus' feet. Then the young boy looked at the priest, really inspired, he said, well, I think I can be the hands and feet of Jesus. And let it be here, Father, it will remind me that if my hands are not being used for Christ and if my feet is not being used for Christ, then this cross, I can burn it off because it means nothing to me. The crucifix will mean nothing to me. That is the reason, my dear brothers and sisters, you find Jesus Christ very sternly telling you that if your hands causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eyes causes you to sin, pluck it off. And if your feet causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to go into heaven, to go into hell without these things, without your hands and without your feet because it is meaningless for you to understand the life that I have lived and how I have used my hands and my feet for the glory of my Father for the kingdom that I have prepared for you and therefore you have to treasure your hands, your feet and your eyes and your mouth and your ears, all your senses for sure. Why? Look at your hands my dear friend. Can you look at your hands? Look at your hands. They are very precious for you. And if it is so precious for you, just imagine the creator who gave you these two hands that you may use it for his glory. But these hands cause so much of sin. These hands lead me to sin and I lead others to sin. My feet, look at your feet, you walk so much, you are so concerned about your feet. And these little feet of ours leads us, makes us walk, takes us to another step and makes us fall into sin and therefore Jesus is more concerned not cutting off your feet and cutting off your hands and plucking up no not practically if at all we had to do that I'm sure here we would be all lame blind terrible people no and you would have your parish priest also without hands and legs terrible no but that is not practical. The young boy who found the meaning of cross is only when he found the cross without hands and without feet. For the Lord died for us on the cross. And you and I can also cut off the sins that we commit by our hands. We can also cut off the sins that I commit with my legs. I can also Avoid the sins that I can through my ears, through my mouth and through my eyes. Therefore we can cut off so much of sin by these senses that God has given us. Now what am I supposed to do? Therefore you find the other part happening in today's gospel reading. The disciples come complaining and we all love to complain about others. We love complaining and the jealousy that we have makes us a big complainer. How many of you are complaint boxes? How many of you are complaint boxes? 
You know, we are all complete boxes. We have, Father, you know, this has to be like this. Mommy, you did this. You did like this. We are all big complaint boxes. But look at Jesus who corrects his disciples and says, Listen, there is someone doing good about for someone good with their hands and with their feet and with their mouth. Do not stop them. They are doing something in my name. Have you done anything really worthwhile with these hands, with these feet, with your mouth, with your eyes? Worthwhile. In the name of Jesus Christ. For his glory. And I'm sure many of us have done nothing great for the Lord. And today the Lord is saying, do not stop others when they are doing something nice by their hands and their mouth and their eyes. You and I are no one to stop them. If they are doing something good in my name, they cannot be against me, nor will they lead others to evil. But we, when we start complaining, you and I have become a block to others. You and I have become a real hindrance to others' kingdom of God entry. That if I have to enter into the kingdom of God and you are a block in my life, Jesus says, tie a big millstone. Just behind our church we have tank bun, throw them there. Buy a millstone around his neck so that he doesn't float, nor his body, nor his entire self comes out upon the water. Why? He is obstacle to someone's entry into the kingdom of God. Therefore, in complaining, we are an obstacle to somebody's life. Then what should I do? A brotherly and sisterly correction is what Jesus tells us. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, we see that it is our duty that we have to inform and bring up our children in the right perspective of the teachings of the gospel. Are we doing that? If not, you and I will be like a person who will say, no, that's not my duty. I think Barclay says something very beautiful. To his readers, he gives a graphic story. He says about a girl whose mother died and she was left with her father. And the father found himself very busy and he had no time to give her. Not surprisingly, this youngster, this girl, finding no companionship at home, a father very busy, caught up with work, caught up with business, caught up in earning. He had no time. And therefore, she was searching on the streets for a good companion. And by mistake, she finds a wrong companion, a wrong kind. And what happens is that she becomes a prostitute. And when she becomes a prostitute, it becomes very late for the father to correct, the father to understand. She dies, she goes there. And on her judgment day, Peter asked Jesus whether we should dispatch this young girl to help. The master replied, listen, in a negative way he said, no. But sternly he said, but look for the father. Look for the father. For he refused to give time for this child. And because he did not give enough time and enough instruction, this little girl was on the streets. The sinner who leads others to sin. And this father who did not really do his part was questioned by the Heavenly Father and therefore he had to go to hell. This is the reason why Jesus says that a millstone should be tied around the neck and be thrown into the sea to give you the taste of hell. He is giving you a very mild taste of hell. If you have not done your part and if you have been a direct obstacle or an indirect obstacle from a child or from anyone to be a source of inspiration, 
rather than an obstacle from the person to enter into the kingdom of God, then I'm sure a millstone is ready around the corner for each and every one of us. Today, my dear friends, we are asked to become Jesus' arms and legs. The smallest little good that we can do is the best because the largest good intention that we have is useless. Like Dotty Day, she says, if you help someone, you are in a way entertaining the angels. And I'm sure when we are going to celebrate the feast of the guardian angels, you must know that you have a guardian angel. And if you do a good work, and if you have your hands and feet and eyes and ears to do something good, you are going to entertain the angels. And you and I should love to do that and entertain all our angels so that you and I are busy doing something for the Lord. A friend of mine says, people in trouble, he says, well, when people are in trouble, I go to them. And I say to them, listen, God is busy. God is very busy. Can I help you? Today, you and I, after hearing to these readings, will have to say to someone who's in need, someone who's in trouble, someone who's in difficulty, someone who's in tension and worries, someone who's not able to focus in life, someone who is not able to find meaning in life, someone who is not able to draw strength from the Lord, you and I should go to that person and say, hey, listen, God is very busy. Can I help you? Amen. Let us all stand for the creed.